Marketing Strategy for Authors, written by Tao Wang, narrated by Shannon Thompson. Examples. All right, we did a ton of theory, but let's talk a few examples. Bob. We'll call example one Bob. Bob wants to write a book. He's not sure he ever wants to write more than one. It's kind of a bucket list item. He's thinking what he'd like to write is a biography of his grandfather, or perhaps a full historical war novel about World War II. Realistically, Bob's not sure he'll ever do more than a single book. He's written most of the book based off his grandfather's stories, but he's not certain how well written the work is since this is his first attempt. In this sense, Bob's not a career writer, not yet. His dream isn't to make a living out of writing, but to see his book published. He'd prefer a bookstore, but he's open to the idea of indie publishing. When asked about timeline, Bob's uncertain. He doesn't have a need to get his work done soon. His grandfather is still healthy and able to answer further question, though Bob would prefer the work to be released before his grandfather passes. In that sense, faster is better. Knowing that, Bob can begin working his career and marketing plan. First, he decides that he'd rather have it released faster than wait for an agent and go trad pub. He need to do a lot more work, and he's still not sure of the focus of his book, so he has to figure out his product. Research shows that there's more of a market for historical war fiction than a memoir, so he decides to shift the book in that direction. He decides that he's too new to really know how to write the book properly, so he knows he'll have to get the full suite of editors. Since he's paying for at least a developmental editor to assuage his personal concerns, he figures there's no point looking for a small publisher who might take him on. He just doesn't have a product ready for them, and by the time he does, he'd have to spend a large portion of his budget anyway. In terms of product types, well. He wants a hardcover edition for his own personal use. A paperback seems a decent option, and maybe large print for his grandfather. All that will cost money or time to do the formatting, so he starts doing estimates of cost on top of that. Audiobooks are put aside, though, since he knows his budget is going to be eaten up by editing. When it comes to pricing, Bob wants to break even more than anything else. In that sense. He decides he's going to go in with a higher base price, put it on KU since that'll let him sell it cheap at the same time. Adding the paperbacks that he'll have created, he feels it'll definitely anchor the price better. Distribution-wise, since he's going with Kindle Unlimited and Amazon, Bob's pretty set. He needs to use a POD printer like Ingram Sparks, but that's not a major issue, and Bob knows that he'll probably not sell a lot of books. The large print edition isn't likely to sell much either, but that's for his grandfather, so it's a cost he's willing to bear, even if it makes no business sense. He also likes the idea of KU and being Amazon exclusive, since he doesn't want the hassle of managing multiple accounts. Having one account to worry about for the most part works for him, since he has to do all this in between his full-time career. That just leaves promotional strategies. Building a website seems a lot of hassle for one book, so he decides to skip that. Bob still uses Facebook, so he doesn't mind creating a Facebook author page and getting an Amazon author account. A mailing list seems to be more work than he's willing to do, and he figures it's only useful for future books he will not release. So he's chosen to skip that for now. He knows he could get people on his mailing list, but he has a large number of friends, which he'll just bother instead. It's not the best option, but it's easy enough for him to do, and Bob's a sociable person anyway. Along with joining Facebook groups and posting on the various forums about World War II history that he joined while researching the book, he figures that'll be a decent platform to being promoting. Bob glances at the other promotional options for spending money and decides he doesn't want to spend the time learning various other marketing platforms. It's too much work, and he just doesn't care. After writing it down, Bob's got a rough idea of what he's going to do. It's not the most robust of marketing plans, but it works for him. 
He gets back to writing, hoping that everything he's done will help sell some books and recover his cost. Now, remember, Bob's main goal isn't to make money, though breaking even would be nice. It's to have a published book he can point at and say, I did this. In that sense, Bob's willing to spend money and come out at a loss, which is why he's compromising on so many portions of the promotional aspects. And that's one example. If Bob had more confidence in his writing, he might instead try shopping his work out to a small publisher. They would take over the editing and promotion process, with Bob having a much lower royalty rate. This might even be the better option financially, especially since Bob doesn't care about making money. His issue is what most writers have, lack of confidence in his work. In Bob's case, this might be true due to his lack of experience. It's hard to say for sure, since this is just a made-up example. But here's two different paths for the same person, 